and then the remote for the radio. There we go, sorted, right. That's the pilot side done. The passenger side is much easier for two reasons. One, because it's only got one button for the intercom of the radio, and the second thing is you can put it in like this, look. Okay. Sorted. I need to put the switch panel here temporarily in place because obviously the aim at the end of this programme is to start the engine. Uh, but this will have to come out again and then be sealed in place and bolted into the fuselage. But it will poke up here. It'll trap the headlining like so. You know you've got it the right way round because the writing for the switches needs to be... When you tip your head back like that, you can read it. So that's right. Now, just need to hold it in place. Whoa, with some clicos. Next one. There we go. Three in. That's holding nicely. I can now put a few more in from up above. The jumpy little tip, by the way, where you get bits of glue on the headlining, you can get that off with machine oil, very, very light machine oil, on a rag, and it will just take it off a treat. Right. A few more jobs to do inside the cockpit, including compass and foot pedals. I tell you what, I'm glad I put the seats in first, because now I've got somewhere to rest my head. Pete, mate? Yeah. Have you got the compass? Yeah. Thanks. I love this compass. It's absolutely brilliant because it's much easier to follow, to steer to, than a kind of more traditional compass which hasn't got the flat card on it. And it's also got this brilliant suspended bracket on it which is made of foam which means it can move in every direction and absorb a lot of the shake and vibration that's inevitable in a helicopter and it just gives enough movement in it when you're flying to help move the card nice and smoothly as you turn. It's a superb bit of kit. Right, that's on. Next, just slot in the GPS. It's time to take off the screen cover. It's terribly foggy out here. Hello. It's like picking a scab. You just to ease it off nicely, and then you won't end up with little fragmenty bits on where it tears like it's going to there. Very careful. Two more bits of fibreglass just to finish off the tail boom. One screw's in there, just with one screw. And then the end cap, which is my hat from earlier, need to plug in the light. Test it works. Yes, it does. Superb. And then the whole thing just slides on like that. It's got four screws. They are all done up. We sorted. Not too tight, Pete. That's fine. Mm -hmm. It's like a big wheelbarrow. <laughs> now, before you can actually turn it over, I need to oil the main chain because the blades will turn. Obviously, the aim is not to take off. That would be a big mistake but the blades will turn at full speed even with the clutch in. So that's resting on there. Just duck down, keep the weight on here. And then by rotating the tail rotor, it rotates the main blade. And now all the oil in the chain oil bath is being mopped up. Funnel. Here you go. Thank you. Okay. So to start this beast, it's all hands on deck because David and Jonathan are going to look after the engine side, check for leaks and also bleed 
the cooling system because there'll be lots of air in there. That needs to get out immediately, otherwise it'll just boil. I'm going to be checking the temperature gauge, the water temperature gauge in the cockpit and also the oil pressure gauge. We need oil pressure within five seconds. If we don't get it, everything gets switched off. And Pete will be standing by with the trusty fire extinguisher. I'll Hel look after you. I'll look after you. Thank you very much. Mr. Health and Safety. Yeah, good. Let's go. Now. Clear. Oh, yes. I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. This is fantastic. Oh, God, this feels so good. So good. a load of the passengers escape hatch completely finished now looks brilliant doesn't it all painted up same black as the front of the helicopter the only additional things that have gone on here now are obviously the hinge brackets here which are very straightforward they come as flat bits of metal in the kit and you just bend them up to the appropriate shape as is the same with the latches here here and here and this is a great bit of kit here it's an air vent very simple piece of engineering you just give it a squeeze and then you can turn it to whatever position you want. So if you want loads of air in, turn it to the front like that and push it right through and you've got a great big hole through there which will scoop loads of air in. If you want less, you can turn it to face the back. Less still, you just pull it in towards you to reduce the size of the hole or you can have it completely shut and you won't let any in at all. Lovely. Now the reason that we've got doors on now is because I actually like flying in here without the doors because I think it's more exciting but because of the test flight there's going to be lots of paperwork in the cockpit and without the doors it will be distributed over the entire Essex countryside rather than staying available for inspection by the CAA so there we go slots in like that two bolts important not to do these too tight because obviously the doors got to be able to swing open Right, sorted. One last job is to take off these two side panels around the engine and also the little cap on the end of the tail rotor so that we can see what's going on and also make some adjustments to things like belt tensions. We're very close now to its maiden test. Oh, I can't wait. Okay, one off. Go. The funny thing about this is that even though <laughs> I've seen this helicopter grow out of bits in a crate, I'm kind of glad that I'm not test flying it. <laughs> you kind of wonder about the mentality of a pilot who's very, very happy to fly other people's experimental kit aircraft. But Ian, the guy for the job, is absolutely mental about them. He loves them. Um, so any opportunity he can get to be able to test one of these beasts, he does it and laps it up. Good on him. Right, that's those off. No leaks or anything like that, but Ian will want to check all that out for himself. Right, last job is the little cap on the end of the tail. impressions can be deceptive. Take a long hard look at this face, that face, not this face. Accountant, bank manager, lawyer, no, completely balmy test pilot. This is Ian King. Ian, I have to say, it's nice Hi, to Mike. have you come and test my baby for me. Well, I hope it's going to be a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> so what qualifies you to be a test pilot then? Well, I was an army pilot and I'm a CA examiner and an instructor and I did a course with the CAA to qualify me as a test pilot for the CAA and in particular most of my work is done on the rotorway. Right, take me through the process of what you're going to do over the next few hours. We're going to make sure that the thing will hover. It'll hover in balance, make sure that the controls, the cyclic, the collective, the pedals all work in the correct manner. Now from time to time we have to adjust them because of course even though you've built it to a control program and measurements 
Each aircraft has a different idiosyncrasy. Each and every one of these is a kit-build aircraft, so it will be slightly different to the last one. And we may find there are a few adjustments to make, especially on the collective, sometimes on the cyclic. The pedals usually are quite well balanced. What do you think to the paint job? Well, it's striking. You ain't going to miss this. And what this helicopter says to me, this says fun, I'm a mean machine.